Uh, as we're gathered together this morning uh, in announcements, one, uh, and I think everybody inquired is now where we are. I know what we said in the announcements, but we are not having uh, choir on Tuesday night because we already pre-practiced, so we're we're good for that. Uh, however, if you haven't already turned in newsletter articles for uh, the January newsletter, you still have time. Please get them in uh, on by, by Tuesday. Um, next Sunday. As we gather together, we'll be gathering together at 10.30 downstairs. Um, the kids will have their, not quite a pageant, but they'll be lead, helping to lead us in worship uh, next Sunday. And we're thankful for that and thankful for the efforts that particularly that uh, Sue Black has put into getting that put together and, and the, the people who are helping with that. Uh, and we'll have a, a light breakfast before we do that. Uh, starting on the 14th, we will wind up uh, coming back together for opening exercises uh, before Sunday school, and that will be at 9.30, uh, prayer time at 9.30 with, with the opening exercises at 9.45, and then moving on from there. Um, other announcements this morning? Alan. If you're picking up your point sevens this morning, Stay down here and the deacons will bring it down to you. Okay, yes, if, if you are taking poinsettias with you this morning, as you come up, just kind of hang out and one of the deacons will meet you and grab your, your poinsettias so that we don't run into each other and the communion table and all that stuff. Uh, others? Okay. Uh, in joys and concerns, uh, particularly uh, keep in prayer uh, Tammy Bocrant and, and the girls and, and the wider family uh, on, on Rich's passing. We, we did have a pretty full house here on Wednesday night for Rich's funeral service, uh, but please, please keep, continue to keep them in prayer. Um, uh, Tom, how how have things gone with 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 family members for you guys? My brother's home, his operation went successful, and my niece she'll be in the hospital for probably three more weeks. Oh wow! Okay, so your brother is is home and improving, and your niece in the hospital for another three weeks or so. Okay. Uh, Terry Pfizer is home and improving. Uh, she still gets pretty tuckered in the late afternoon and into the evening, but she is she's doing really pretty well. Um, let's see what others might we have this morning? Nancy. Uh, my brother goes for a PET scan on the 29th. Uh, they couldn't tell for sure what was going on with the two biopsies. Um, let's see. Okay, yeah, PET scan for for your brother Bill, and, and we'll, we'll keep that in prayer. Um, and for folks who've been asking, yes, Tina is doing okay. Every day is a little better. She wasn't quite ready for prime time this morning, uh, but she and Vera will be here this evening. So uh, thank you all for. Uh, cards, food, whatever else you brought and sent, and I know they're greatly appreciated. Uh, Tina's had a really nice stack of, of really swell uh, thank you, or er, uh, well cards, uh, and, and we're greatly appreciative. Others? Okay. Uh, let us take a moment and prepare to join together in worship as we listen to our prayers.
Samuel chapter 7, verses 4 through 12. But that same night, the word of the, the, word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling, in all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel. Did I speak a word with, my, with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house, to, a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to, to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture from the following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from with you wherever you went. Sorry. And I have been, I'm wearing the wrong glasses. <laughs> And I have been with you. Thank you. <laughs> and I have been with, with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make you make for you a great name like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people's eat Israel and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more, as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be with him a father, and he shall be a son. When he commits in, in quit, iniquity, I will discipline him with the rod of men, with the stripes of the sons of men. But my steadfast love will not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. In your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. We live on the brink every day. We stand on the threshold between this world and the next one. We live and move between the ordinary and, the, and divine, between the mundane and the mystery. Too often we forget to look up and see angels in our living room. We forget that the love we give and live is a sign of eternity. God with us, right now. We forget that company is coming. Luke tells us that God's favor came to a girl, an ordinary girl. It might have been you or your daughter. It might have been the girl down the street or your grandchild. But the messenger of God came and greeted her and said, The Lord is with you. What a gift and a promise. Emmanuel, God is with us. We light these candles with love in our hearts for the promise of proximity, the nearness of God. Even we forget to listen, to lean into that presence. God is as close as our own breath. This is a confused and confusing world. It is a love that surpasses everything. It is the love that knows that company is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us read the fourth verse of O come, O come, Emmanuel.
for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Lord our God, as we come before you on this day, as we are mindful that today is not only Christmas Eve, but it is that fourth Sunday of Advent, as we seek to celebrate tonight and remember your son's first coming as we await his second, we are thankful to be in your presence and we pray that you would touch us, that you would show us the Father's love in the completed work of your Son and the power of your Holy Spirit raining down upon and within us. Lord, kindle in us that hope that we might be awakened and made new. Lord, all this we ask as we seek your presence in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, blessed now and forevermore. Amen. All of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And yet the miracle of God's amazing love is this, that while we were yet sinners and strangers to the truth, God sent his son to die for us to take our penalty, that should we come before him seeking his face in faith and confessing our sins, he is merciful and just to forgive those sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us join in a moment of silent personal confession. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. Yet Christ died for us. He rose for us. He reigns in power for us and he prays for us. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that one is a new creation. The old life is past and gone, and a new life has begun. Uh, you can be seated. We're doing this a little more informally this morning, and as we do that, uh, Michelle has asked for reasons that make perfectly good sense for somebody who depends on her fingers for, for her life, and yet at the same time uh, has arthritis. She's asked that we break the carol thing into two pieces parts, so we're going to do that, and if we could do, uh, you can call out... Uh, what you, you would like to sing, but if we could do first and last verses. Two eighty, please. Two eighty, okay. <laughs> One small child.
Two to seven.
get it in this time. Don't worry about it. We still got one more shot at it. 251. 
Lord, as we are in this time between two Advents, as we prepare this evening to celebrate your son's coming, as we await to see the earthly light that represents him to us, we ask that you would be with us, that that hope indeed would be awakened in us in the midst of darkness, frequently of despair, and in voices that counsel it. But we ask that your word would speak deeply in our hearts and minds, awakening us to that hope that we might see you and celebrate your son's arrival. We ask all this in your son's name. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning is taken from the first chapter of John's Gospel, beginning in the first verse. Together, let us hear the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory, as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, do we have the uh, small guys out, out in the back there, or are they downstairs? Okay, that's, that's all right. Uh, as we're gathered this morning, and this is more of a... Uh, short homily than a full-up sermon. But how, how many of us have ever remembered being stuck in the dark in the midst of uh, uh, maybe a storm or something where the power goes out and it is dark? One of the most terrifying times I, I've ever experienced was when the kids were small, we were in New York, and it was in the summertime, the state fair was going on in Syracuse, and all of upstate New York got hit with one line after another of straight line winds and thunderstorm. And it was really a pretty peaceful night. We had Cicadas buzzing, we had all kinds of things going on, the fan was running, we had tree frogs all around us and we could hear all of that and then, and, and we were sleeping peacefully and then all of a sudden, there was this dead quiet, there were no tree frogs, there were no cicadas, the power had gone out, there were no lights, the fans were not blowing. It was the most loud quiet I have ever heard, or not heard, in my life. Tina and I both sat bolt upright in bed at the same time and said to each other in unison, what was that? And we, because it was dark and the kids were little, we went and each of us grabbed, a, well, a, I grabbed two, she grabbed one. We got them downstairs to the, the best room in the house for that. And for the next four hours, we heard the lightning and saw 
straight line winds that made the 45 or 50 foot tall uh, walnut tree in our backyard lean at an angle about like that. Like I say, I've never been so scared in all my life. In its own way, that kind of darkness, that kind of quiet, represents what goes on around us day in, day out. All times are chaotic. Even when we think there's, there's quiet around us, all times are chaotic, and that chaos and that darkness is around us, and it can flare up in a moment, in a heartbeat. Definitely we are in one of those periods right now. I have seen more speculation, end time speculation. I have seen more people freaked out and losing their minds than I can remember in my lifetime. And yet, if we focus on that rather than on the hope that we have, that hope that we're awaiting, the coming of that light, the joy and the peace that will come from that, that we are promised. That that light has come. He has already come, and as the scripture tells us, his own did not recognize or know him. They didn't want to recognize or, or know him. And yes, that is talking about Israel, but it's talking about people. He came, and very few people would hear his voice. They didn't want to acknowledge him. And the storms of life raged on. The Roman Empire was large and in charge. Herod was small, but in his, big, in his little pond, he was a big frog. And he thought he was large and in charge. And... Yet, in the midst of that, that small young lady from a no-account backwater town, who could have been anybody, who was not of noble birth, who really had very little to recommend by reputation, she was probably only 15. 16, maybe, though we don't know that. And yet God does this amazing work in her. And in that, hope does awake, that it comes alive. And that hope is announced first to Mary by Gabriel, and the Joseph in a dream. The word goes out to the shepherds from angels. People who are terribly important in the economy and the life of the, 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 the area, the country at that time, but who in worldly standards had no pull. I mean, shepherds were a dime a dozen. Frankly, except for the fact that the sheep would get eaten otherwise, the sheep were probably more valuable in the economy than the shepherds were. And yet, they have a testimony that they bring. They're called out specifically so they can come and witness this great going on. They are called out so that they may be presented with an epiphany of, of glowing in the light. And no, I'm not rushing that season either. But literally, they see this amazing thing. And as they see that, as they see the light dawn, there is now a witness that is being given. As we look at that passage that we have, we note that it's a retelling 
from a gospel perspective of the Genesis narrative. It doesn't go in for all the seven days of creation, but it says, you know, it, it talks about God coming. It talks about the creation. It talks about how the, the pre-incarnate Christ has always been there and that he was absolutely a part of and integral to the creation of all things. And that he will be Emmanuel, God with us. That he will come, he will be with us, the one for us. And in that delivery we have but to reach out. He already reaches down to us. Not in some vague hope that maybe we might respond, but so that we can respond. And as he does so, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of sometimes the very stormy quiet and darkness, his light shines out. We may not, in all the, the chaos and the static that go on around us, we may not see the light directly. How many of you have ever stared up at the sun for any period of time? How much can you see when you stare at a light that bright? You really can't. And then when you look back down, what do you see? Spots. Yeah, blue dots. Yeah. But in that apparent shadow to us, that's looking at the brightest part of the light. As Jesus was coming, as he was unrecognized, yet that brightest part of the light that appears a shadow to us, one day we will see in fullness, in glory, in its complete effulgence. And we will be moved beyond our ability to be moved. It will be inexpressible. It will be In the words of the, the Toby Mac song, I can only imagine. That is the hope that we have, that is the hope that we celebrate, that we remember, and more importantly, the hope toward which we look as we, we bear witness one to another of that which has been delivered to us, of the faith that we have, and of the call that we have been given to be witnesses and heralds and reporters of that great good news, even as the shepherds were told and told to give glory to God for that which was given to them. As we celebrate this day, as we prepare to come together tonight to memorialize his coming, as we hear the readings, as we sing the songs, as we celebrate around the Lord's table tonight, let us know that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That all things were made through Him, not one thing that was made was not made without Him. And that He has come for us, that we might be children. And now we'll return you to your regularly scheduled carol sing. <laughs>
We just did that one a minute right before we did the scripture lesson. Okay, 253. 253. Okay.
It is that. But it is the story of an infant who seems helpless, but who doesn't remind, it does not remain merely a nice, quiet, well-disposed infant who is not a tame lion, but who is the Lion of Judah, who has come to rescue us, to take us home with him as we stand between these two advents. Let us remember that, proclaim it from the housetops, from the mountaintops, in all of this. Let us thank the Almighty God for the light that he has given to us in the midst of our darkness. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank you.